It's been a while since Thailand finally opened her arms to the world, ridding herself of quarantines and mask up mandates. In 2019, Bangkok was the most visited city in the world. Today, Thailand ranks third in places to travel in the next 12 months by Singaporeans. But in our hearts, Bangkok still places first in the cities we want to travel, play and eat. There is a rite of passage here in Bangkok. It's something you will need careful planning and a ton of patience. Yes, it's the iconic Bangkok Jam. Believe it or not, Bangkok has so-called a winter season. Between November and February, this city cools down to the low 20s. And that's perfect for walking weather. Here, you need to take the train here, and we change, then you see a from If you cannot stomach the traffic, there is a better option. Bangkok's BTS brings you to almost anywhere in the city. After getting off, go on foot and let your nose lead you. So now we are going to have our breakfast first, uh, the pork noodles. And then after that, we are going to Subhanakum Airport to pick Justin up. Let's go. Rompong Station sits right in the city centre along Sukhumvit Road. It's a bustling district for the sophisticated and expats living in Bangkok. The roads are lined with endless carts of street food, high-so restaurants and really cool bars. So, unless someone tells you where to go, you might need more than a day or a week to eat your way through the streets. So this particular place, a number of my friends have recommended it. It's like Thailand's version of Bas Hong Mi. Yeah, so let's give it a try and see what the fight is all about. A full house, a small menu, countless accolades. Jackpot. This has got to be good. There are only six options to choose from, and every one of them a different rendition of pork and noodles. Here, noodles tossed in savoury, spicy and sour tom yum seasoning take the stage as the people's choice. Oh, it's very it's a very small serving. The meat pork is very fresh. The fish pork is very skinny. Will you help yourself with banana bowl? There are two stalls next to each other, with the same name selling the same thing. They are owned by two brothers, but run their businesses separately. We don't know why it's so, but both tasted indistinguishable from each other. In other words, same same, but different. Now we are taking the train, the airport, and it's going to take us 22 minutes to get to Subhanabu Airport. Right here, and then he is going here. He is about 20 minutes away. Let's wait for him. <laughs> Where's the bull in the skin? It's so far, right? <laughs> ah, yeah, we are home, we are home. <laughs> uh, I haven't got a car yet. Oh, yeah. I okay. Okay. Looking for you now. Hi, guys. Okay, the car is here. Oh, so fast? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to 
<laughs> now that there are more mouths at the table, we can eat more. And in Bangkok, options are unlimited. And eating well doesn't burn a hole in a pocket. And like I said before, go on foot and let your nose lead you. So I just arrived to Bangkok. We are in the Safan Takin area and Bangra Market is right here. But today we are feeling a bit fancy, so we are going to first start off with a nice cafe. Sarnis, we have one in Singapore, but I think the decor here is much nicer. Let's go check it out. This is just one of the many streets in this city where new life has been breathed into century-old streets, where new cafes and generational businesses share the same address. We okay, had a very small alley. Right next to Bangra Market, it's like a four-minute walk away from the Taksim BTS. Over here, we've got Sani's and we have this really nice cafe who makes very nice apple tart. I'm not so sure if they still sell. Ah, oh, they're closed, uh, unfortunately. I guess we have to come back another day, or maybe we we'll skip this altogether. Sunnies. Where we are sitting is a 150-year-old building once abandoned. It was occupied by folks who repaired boats. Today, it's an indication of Bangkok's international population. Sarnies satisfied the city folk with the Australian-style grub with Thai flavours using local produce. Just trying to decide what we want to eat, but we got some beers first, some craft beers. Cheers. Cheers. So what should we eat? <laughs> So I asked the staff just now, on the charcuterie plate, right, we have two kinds of cheese that is made from cow's milk from Chiang Mai. One soft cheese, one semi-hard cheese. And then they give us salmon or bama ham and chorizo. But I don't think that is the highlight. The highlight is really the cheese. Okay, I'm going to start with the soft cheese. Mm. Wow. It's kind of like a mix of, you know, the lava chili that we opened up, the cream cheese bread, wrapped in a triangular form. Ah, uh, yeah. It's between that, and like a brie cheese or camembert cheese. Mm. Oh, it's very soft. Very creamy. It's still quite melty, it's not so cheesy. Yeah, it is very creamy. I mm. tried it with the chorizo. A bit mm. not a good mix. No? Okay, put down. <laughs> we need more beer. Yeah, I need more beer. Uh, can we get the next round? Yes. Thank beer. you. Thank you. I come to Bangkok very often and sometimes it's not all about the street food and all about the very daring food. Coming to cafes is, is one of the favourite things that I like to do as well because the decor is so nice. Like, how can you find this kind of place in Singapore, right? Like, and yeah. because they repurpose all the older buildings, you mm. know, so there's yeah. a sense of life to yeah. it. And there's that real heritage and the real charm. Yeah, as compared sell, like, to thing. like in Singapore, it's always a single purpose yeah. use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. After paying the bill, there was still space in the belly and still a strong craving for truly local street food. We arrived at the shop plastered with Michelin Guide stickers. Anthony Bourdain himself, the legend, once sat here because of that same cravings we had. We definitely were in the right place. So this is my recommendation, Tok Prince. Okay. The Julian Prince of Porridge. Tok is Tok, the Prince is Prince. It's very, very good. <laughs> Why is Prince? Prince. Why is Prince? Uh? I don't know why it's called Prince. Uh. I think why is Prince? I just think it's Prince. Uh, Prince of Bangkok. <laughs> so Prince has been stirring its pots for over 50 years. And here, pork reigns supreme. But unlike its royal name, they called it Prince just because they used to be located on an alley leading up to a theatre named Prince. Thank you Yeah! So Prince! So what I like about this, right, is like the consistency is just nice, it's not too liquid, it's like thick enough. Reminiscent of the porridge I find in Maxwell Market, right? so it's very smooth. You have a little bit of that, almost like a wok hay flavour in the porridge. It's like, maybe they forget to leave it on the stove and then they accidentally burn it. But it's not like, um, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, it's like it adds like the animation to the, to the yeah. porridge. Right, you can smell yeah. it, right? It's not offensive. Okay, I'm going to have one of my favourite. The liver. Mm. It's not tough, but it's springy. It's not overpowering because when you overcook liver, right? I mean, you don't really eat liver. Yeah. But my liver overcooked already, so it's, <laughs> so it's mine. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bite into the ginger. Oh, the oh. ginger is so good to help clear out the, the gaminess of liver. Mm. Eat, eat, eat the whole thing, go. 
the century egg is very soft. The texture of it, I like the texture because like most of the century eggs in Singapore that you get is always like slightly more harder to bite in. Yeah, yeah there's a bite to it lah. Yeah, but the, even the whites of the century egg is like soft, not yeah. rubbery. Correct. Yeah. The meatballs are very flavorful. Mm. Yeah. And it's like very succulent, very smooth. It's not the kind of grainy, meaty meatballs that sometimes we have. And it's still like whole meat. It's not overly processed. Wow, I like it very much. I mean, that is how you see whether or not is it homemade or is mm -hmm. it, you know, like factory made. Mm -hmm. Because all the shapes of the meatballs are all very different. Mm. Yeah. I can eat this any time of the day. Breakfast, lunch, supper. Less than three bucks, you get so Less much. Less than $3. Very short. Mm. So, it's no surprise that we ended up along the street devoid of tourists. This is Charan Krung, Bangkok's first functional road built in the 1860s running parallel to the Chao Phraya River. Signs of age were apparent on these roads. It was dusty and cluttered. Separating that and the river sits this quaint little restaurant with the best views of the Chao Phraya River. And now, it's time to eat. How do you feel now? It's very nice. We are on the water. It's a very different view of Bangkok. I've always taken the river boats around here, but I've never thought about this place until now. Whoa! That's catfish, right? Yeah, catfish. Okay, you eat really, not my turn to eat. <laughs> Now we already fit the fish, so now we need to fit ourselves. Yes. Oh, oh, my hand very tired. <laughs> Singaporeans, we are obsessed with food. We know that food brings not just comfort, but happiness when the right people are seated next to you. Thank you for bringing us here. This is David and Eileen. They moved to Bangkok 20 years ago. The streets of Bangkok are engraved in their minds, marked by memories of great food. With them leading the way, we will never be hungry. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and let's dig in. Wow, that's so rich, so creamy. I thought it was mushroom and no flavor, right? Mm. But I actually got hot flavor. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have one whole chili inside. Oh, that's spicy. <laughs> Fried rice with num prick, so it's like a sambal fried rice. Mm. Oh, I like the fried rice. Mm. Like huge chunks of fish inside there. Like, yeah. So flaky. Mm. This is fried pork belly. Yeah, we put it with all these herbs and dill. Yeah. Just see ya. This fried pork is like next level. Mm. It's almost like two yosa. It's so wow. light and fluffy. Eh. Wow. It's not greasy. Okay, so this is fried coconut flesh and mushrooms and egg. Mm. Oh. You, can, you can smell the stir fry. Ooh. Oh, coconut is still juicy. Wow. Wow, it's like a very new way to eat omelette and mushrooms. I think they put saipo also. Yeah. Saipo everywhere. Okay, well, I have another try. Have you tried this one? Not yet. I'm going to try this one. Oh, I love this. I love the local stem. I always have it in the soup. Gang song. Okay, let's go. One mouth. Lotus root. Oh, so springy, so juicy. And it's very crunchy. Then after that with the prawn, mm. and it just bites into it. Oh, shit. Wow. Oh, I think so far, this is my favorite. Like crunchy and then springy from the prawns. I actually really like the number fried rice. I like light fish. Chili. I love the fish. Catfish, yeah. Yeah. Catfish. Oh, the catfish. It's shred. Mm -hmm. It's so meaty. They're just very generous with it. You know where is the catfish from? Huh? You know, just not <laughs> I feed. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to drop one net down. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Obviously, we loved it. A killer view. A ridiculous amount of delicious food. What more can we ask for? We will be back for more. We're at Pom Prap Satru Pai in Bangkok's Central Business District. This is where roads and railways converge, the ultimate crossroad. Now would be a good time for a coffee before deciding where to go next. Okay, sure. 
very refreshing. So now we are at Mopado Cafe. It's just outside the entrance towards Yawaran. It's very, very French, this architecture here. It smells like coffee. I could live like this. Ching ching! So we're going to Chatu Chak now. Last minute decision. We're going to get some airbrush tattoos to see if I want more tattoos next time. <laughs> Sunday in Bangkok is a good time to be spontaneous. Most locals leave for the weekend, so the roads are all ours. Wow! <laughs> Chatuchak Market is one of the biggest street markets in Asia. Packed in 35 acres, there are more than 8,000 stalls. So, there is something for everyone. You lead the way! <laughs> Food, drinks, apparels, literally everything you want can be found here. Even spray on tattoos to give your parents a shock when you get home. <laughs> We are already oh, you in, get tattoo. <laughs> in Chatu Chak Market okay, and we are walking towards the shop that I remember that does the eyebrows. Quick, painless, and all between 100 and 990 baht. I'm just gonna get a few, so I want to know whether I like it or not. And if I do like it, I might just get it. Why is this one? Let me see your tattoo. Yeah. It's very small compared to the one that I did the last round. Yeah, the first one was the entire hand, like this whole hand. No, not like that. La. <laughs> it was just slightly bigger only. Hey, we're supposed to get the ice cream. The coconut uh, milkshake. Coconut shake. Yes, coconut I... shake. <laughs> but oh, today's a really nice day to walk. Today's it's a very cloudy. nice day to walk. It's not very hot. It's not as hot as yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah cloudy. Yeah. It's like overcast. Yeah. yeah. Perfect Chacha Shark weather. So I can always get a nice cooling coconut shake. Yeah, so yeah, yeah coconut shake is for me la. For you is for like fine of beer la. Oh. One or both. <laughs> yeah. We are getting coconut milkshakes. Everybody seems to be getting ice cream, but I think we need a coconut milkshake. Yeah. Is this going to be better than Mr. Coconut? Let's see. Double shot or the vodka. Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> Not as shocked as the one that I had in Phuket, but still shocked. I actually think Mr. Coconut is nicer. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. It's creamier. This one is more like watery, but watery is okay. La. It's very refreshing. So, where to next? We're going to take Tuk Tuk back to the hotel. Mm. Yeah. Yes. We're going to treat ourselves to a tuk tuk ride back to our hotel. All the way in Silong. <laughs> We're heading back on the tuk tuk. It's going to take us about 30 minutes to go back. I hope they don't chop us. Ha <laughs> ha 
Oh, no. Don't even think we're done eating. Isn't that why people come to Bangkok? Every time we come back, there is always something new. A stone left unturned, a dish yet to be savoured. Now, if you are an incessant cafe hopper, Hong Xiang Kong should be on your list to check off. It's a charming cafe set in a 150-year-old building offering panoramic views of the Chao Phraya River. Coffee is great, desserts too. Ambience, almost nirvana. Here, time stood still. The cafe was more like a museum. Sprawled across the rooms were relics from yesteryears, and some dating back 500 years. Once broken, <laughs> considered sold. Now, for the serious coffee fanatics. There is nothing wrong with a franchise as long as they remain good. At the Mahanakan building, there is a food court with Bangkok's most famous foods. What are you having now? Having coffee. My fifth cup of coffee holiday. Traditional Thai style coffee. A lot of condensed milk. Can't wait for What is this? Tong Tea leaf and cream coffee. It's sweet. Very sweet. You still have so much as well. Tong 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 to wash it down, they serve a glass of Chinese tea. There is no special orders here. If you like it less sweet, then stir less. However you like your coffee, this really hits the spot. Getting off the beaten path, we found another restaurant hidden from plain sight. The chefs at the never-ending summer fill this restored warehouse with salivating aromas. Recipes cooked here all came from old cookbooks belonging to high society matriarchs. Verdict? Delicious, homely with a touch of sophistication. Thailand is rich in nature. So, a cafe that serves organic food plucked from his own farms only seems logical. Patom Organic Living Cafe does exactly that. Oh, give me a coffee. I'm so hungover. <laughs> oh. Are you dare to try? I really want to try. Try the day, you cannot go home. Yeah. Wait a minute. No, it will stay in your blood. Mm -hmm. That's the point, right? <laughs> Food comes in Tiffin stacks. It's entirely self-help, so take your pick and the team will heat them up for you. Pick wisely. Some of the selections are organically green. All right, last dinner in Bangkok before I go back to Singapore. So we're in Tong Lo area, right next to the commons, this restaurant called Tao Jiao. Tao Jiao. But what's great about here, they serve very authentic Thai food. So if the food here is supposed to be spicy, it's spicy. And you walk in, already you can smell that pungent smell that not a lot of people can take. <laughs> it's probably all the fermented fish sauce that they use. Uh, so this place was recommended by, by my Thai friend and it's like cost very little. Like you go through the, through the menu, it's like one for 75 baht, 60 baht. Very affordable. Almost, uh, so I've ordered the stir fried cabbage with fish sauce. Must have when you're in Thailand. It's so simple and it's so nice. The som tam with marinated crabs, pad thai, basil fried rice with squid, tom yum. What else do you want? 
Thank you. Oh yeah, egg. So how is this Bangkok trip? I think I want to move to Bangkok after this trip. <laughs> I have quite a lot of friends here. Then we met Eileen and David, mm -hmm. and they've been so nice, so kind. So it feels a bit more safe if we do decide to move here. I mean, every time I come to Bangkok, it's always catching our friends, and then we're gonna have a good time eating and partying, but I didn't party as much. <laughs> we ate more. I think this trip is really about our food and only about our food. And everything is so fresh. Like, talking off the, the land here is so flavorful and so close. And you know, opening a restaurant is all about local ingredients. And it just excites me to think about moving here and being so close to so many good parties. All the while, I have always been planning to move to Bangkok. Not so much of just Bangkok, but Thailand. Lah. There's a lot of everything that I want here. You can work during the weekdays and then weekends you can like go off to you know some Rainbow mountain for you to decompress and then come back again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I feel that it's good in terms of quality of life, but of course there are also downsides to it. Lah. Yeah. I think moving here would be thing you need to think about because we're not citizens. Be polite, be very polite to everyone. Because you are still a guest here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. not like at home. You know. We're a bit entitled. <laughs> <laughs> bank table, <or> anything. <laughs> yeah, you bank table, they say, wait. <laughs> and cheers to you guys. Thank you for watching our videos and podcasts. Please subscribe to us. If you like more travel and food videos, uh, give us a like, a thumbs up, and notify yourself every time we have a new video coming. So, see you in Bangkok, or see you in Singapore, or wherever in the world that we may be. So, catch you soon. Bye, guys.